Hello and welcome to the Financial Express. The assembly elections in Punjab are just months away and the Shiromani Akali Dal is hoping to turn the tide in what will be a multi-cornered contest. The polls are being predicted to turn into a close battle and this will be the first time in several years when the Shiromani Akali Dal will be contesting the elections sans an alliance with the BJP which has they have now replaced with Mayawati's Bahujan Samaj Party. Today we have with us senior party leader and former union minister Harsimrat Kaur Badal who will take us through how the party plans to repeat its 2007 and 2012 performances. My first question is, uh, Shiromani Akali Dal has been quite active on the ground lately. How do you expect the party to perform in these elections? I think an indication of that should be clear by the 100 years of Akali Dal celebrations which were just held two days ago in Moga. We had 100 acres of land where there was not even space to put a foot down anywhere. It was chock block full and 50 kilometers from both sides of the road coming in from both sides of Punjab were totally jammed. Uh, there were, I think you can speak to the media heads as well as a lot of the leaders who had to get off on foot and walk for 15 kilometers to be able to reach the venue site. So I think this kind of a massive gathering clearly shows that there is absolute anger against the ruling government and people are out on the roads wanting to change the government. Um, not just our workers, but if you go across Punjab, across every Congress leader's house and in their locality, they are being opposed right from teachers to doctors to uh, all different kinds of unions. They're all out because the government has failed to fulfill a single of their promises to the extent that they had to change their own chief minister. Their own MLAs realized that the government was a big failure and they thought that by changing you know, the face on top and dumping all the negativity on him, they would be able to get away. But people have seen through it. And I'm very confident that this alliance of Shiromi Akali Dal and Bahujan Samaj Party is set to sweep the next elections and get down to governance, which has been missing in the last five years. Uh, how many seats do you expect the party to win? I don't like talking in the air, but I can just tell you very confidently that we will sail through a majority and have a very comfortable uh, and a solid, stable government because Punjab has suffered in last five years. We've fallen in every parameter. Even if you look at the latest COVID figures, the highest number of deaths was in Punjab. You also know that how the vaccines, when they came into Punjab, instead of providing it to people free of cost, they were sold to private hospitals and it goes right up to the ch uh, chief secretary, to the health minister, who was then dismissed from his position when the new CM supposedly came. So people are fed up of being ruled by Delhi and ruled by puppets. They now want a government and Shlomi Akali Dal has 10 years of governance to show whether we made the state power surplus, whether we built a network of roads that connects every corner of Punjab within two hours. The highways are something which are parallel to any foreign country, whether it's our airports and whether it's our welfare schemes. Atta Dal was started uh, for the poor by Sardar Prakar Singh Badal in 2012 and then followed by the nation, national government besides many other state governments. So we have a history of where we have delivered more than what we promised and Congress comes with the baggage of not only non-delivery but they even swore on oath of a holy book as to deliver and they failed in every front. So people are now questioning them which is why they're out on the streets wanting their rights and I think in just as soon as the code of conduct comes into force, I don't think there's a single Congress person that's going to be able to go out and campaign also because people are going to ask so many questions of them. Uh, on one hand, there is this Congress who has appointed Charanji Singh Channi uh, as the chief minister who is a Dalit face. Uh, on the other hand is your party uh, who has joined hands with Bahujan Samaj party who is again a Dalit, uh, primarily a Dalit party. How do you think this factor might be taken into consideration when, the, when talking about elections? See, people are very intelligent. You can't fool them. Charanjit Singh Chani was a chief minister made out of uh, under duress because uh, they had to remove Amrinder Singh. Congress High Command decides sitting in Delhi who should rule Punjab. They wanted Sunil Jakhar. Then they decided that a Hindu face would not be accepted. 
in which case then they thought of ambika soni of parachuting her here that didn't work out then they thought of sukhi randhava who is now uh, the home minister when the consensus wasn't built on that then eventually it was decided that just to pacify everybody to have a sick face and to have a dalit ka to neutralize the uh, bsp and the shromi akali dal alliance as a last resort this uh, chief minister channi was made and the sad part is that they wanted to play a dalit ka to neutralize us to get the dalit votes but the sad part is that they do not consider him competent enough to announce him as the next chief minister face with whom congress will go into the elections so i think people see through this that where you use the dalits and everybody knows that he was made under a majburi to say and in his last 3 months as chief minister there has been nothing except announcements and waste of the exchequer's money putting up hoardings across punjab taking out full page ads every day and nothing of those promises reaching the people so i think he if you go to the road sides in punjab and you ask about mr channi he is called elania jit singh channi mr charanjit singh elania means someone makes a new promise and a new elan every day and that's all he's done for 3 months next 2 months he's going to be doing the same thing so with the infighting in congress where the party president uh, sidhu himself calls charanjit good for nothing the congress party calling the last four and a half years of not delivery themselves it's very clear what the people's sentiments are and uh, the congress party is feeling very now when we talk about as you said that uh, about religious harmony uh, now uh, sacrilege cases along with drugs uh, menace has been something which has been the uh, you know uh, which has been at the forefront of aam aadmi party and congress campaign uh, when it comes to attacking your party uh, what do you have to say on this well congress has a history of using religion uh, in punjab to divide and rule whether i go back to the 1984s where they attacked uh, holy akal takht sahab and the golden temple whether is the massacre of 84 where the genocide was committed on the sikhs these were all for political gains i mean that's why the entire 8 years of terrorism even came about in punjab because uh, congress had certain uh, intentions for punjab which were not in the benefit of punjab which led to that dark age of punjab so be it the sacrilege case also we happen we are proud to say that we are a party which is peace loving which works on the ideology set down by our gurus which is uh, humanity to work for humanity and peace and prosperity of all and in 2015 16 the way these two parties congress and aam aadmi party the way they worked up the sacrilege issue not giving uh, the shromni akali dal time to even sort it out and demanding that it be handed over to the cbi within 3 weeks and taking it out of our hands and then for last 5 years using the issue which is something which is very sentimental and very close to the hearts of people but using it as a political tool to whip out whip up emotions anti the shromni akali dal people have now seen through that because you had 5 years to sort out those cases you did nothing but to do political vendetta which was said by the honorable high court which gave strict strictures against the sit head of kovar vijay pratap who's now joined the aam aadmi party and exposed truly what congress and aam aadmi was doing and uh, be it the drugs issue where uh, the congress swore on the holy gutka that in four months they would uh, four weeks they would get rid of drugs and drugs has become like a home delivery of uh, uh, through amazon like other things are delivered by the congress and their police and hundreds of youth have died and people are fed up because no one is taking any action but yet despite five years not having sought to sacri- sort uh, solve sacrilege or put an end to drugs they want to use it as a whipping tool you would be surprised to hear that five years it's been congress regime how can the akalis been selling drugs but now on the way out when there's just about 20 days left for code of conduct the police officers are being changed again and again because they're being pressurized that do every illegal thing but right on the file and arrest uh, the shiromni akali dal leadership on either sacrilege or on drugs and you'll be surprised to hear that five dgps have been changed the last one has admitted himself in hospital with 
writings on the file that the illegal things that I've been told to do against Majithia and against the Akalis is totally illegal. And I will do none of them. And not one, but five of these officers of the top level have resigned. So this is what they are resorting to. So people see through the fact that you had five years, you did nothing. And now to keep blaming someone in the previous government who doesn't have the power to do any of the selling or any of the sacrilege. And I'd also like to point out here that there have been hundreds of sacrileges which has taken place in the last five years. Mm -hmm. So forget about solving those. They just want to keep it as a emotional issue, which is to be whipped up every time elections come. And people are not going to accept that. And I can promise the people one thing, that the kind of allegations they put on us, for them, it's only politics. But for us, it's our guru. And to get rid of this allegation, we will ensure that we find the real culprits and bring them to the public notice. Sure. Uh, Akali Dal has a long history of alliance with the BJP. Uh, but the party broke its alliance with the part uh, with the BGP and came out of the NDA uh, over the issue of farmers' crisis and the farm laws. But now the center has now that the center has repealed the farm laws and has also agreed to consider uh, the other demands of the farmers. Do you think there is any chance or any scope of any reconciliation? You know, right from the time. These three ordinances were brought and tabled at the cabinet meeting. I not only tried everything that I could to convince the leadership that this must be delayed, must be postponed and do not do anything until the stakeholders have been consulted and their grievances addressed. And at the risk of where you know, people do not raise an issue more than once, I was a lone voice in that huge majoritarian uh, cabinet where not once but three, four times I appealed and I even begged that please do not do it. But regardless of that, where I was assured that, you know, before it comes into the parliament and it's made a law, we will address all these issues. But the surprising thing was that the first session which came up a month and a half later, um, the monsoon session, it was the first item that was tabled. Despite the fact that no farmers had been consulted uh, none of us, we had, I had written a letter to Tomar Saab, our president, listing out all the issues. Those had not been resolved. And just of the sheer strength of numbers, the way they passed it through both the houses was in front of you. So Shromi Akali Dal has always been a farmer's party. Farming is the backbone of our Punjab. Everything is dependent on the farming. And when you bring in laws which our people are opposing for six months, they've been sitting on the railway tracks. And you bring it up in this high-handed way. While Congress aided the BJP along with um, Aam Admi, which is the rule opposition party in Punjab, while they aided the BJP by having their say and then walking out and reducing the numbers so the bills could be passed easily, I went and gave in my resignation, came back, and Subir and myself were the two voices that opposed loudly when everyone was supporting this. So, and I'm glad that uh, we did that because today it's proof that what we were opposing was absolutely right. And if they had listened to us, the 700 farmers who have lost their lives in the course of this one year's agitation would today be alive. And I would say that not only the 700 farmers, of course, we can never forget them. But what it has done to the social fabric of Punjab, what it has done to the economy of Punjab, to the financial environment of Punjab, what has been brought about by the BJP via these three laws is really sad because Shoni Akalida, like I said, for communal peace and harmony, Mr. Badal spent 16 years in jail. He, he, his entire life of 70 years in politics has been this. And these one bill created such tensions in the commun uh, community because they may be BJP leaders, but there are they were also Hindu brothers of Punjab and the way they were beaten up, the way their clothes were torn, and how it's impossible for them even to come out of their houses. It made me feel bad because they are our brothers at the end of it. They were not even consulted. They're not even discussed with them. The top leadership just, you know, thopos these things on them and these poor people here on the ground have to bear the brunt. So they, it has done a lot of damage and uh, the scars are deep by being called terrorists, by being called parijivi, by being called atakwadi and khalistani. The way they were beaten up with rods, the way cases of Desh Trohi, UAPA cases put on them. I mean, what all have these people 
not gone in this last one year you can't just wash it away because you've taken back the laws like i said the scars are deep the wounds are raw and it will take a long time to heal there's no question of shomi akali dal going back to the bjp uh the aam aadmi party plans to bring the delhi model in punjab uh, it has announced several uh, freebies uh, for the people if they are voted to par uh shiromani akali dal on its part and the congress have also announced similar schemes i'll not say the same but similar schemes uh, lately uh, is this an acknowledgement of uh, aam aadmi party emerging as a major player in this contest aam aadmi party uh, in 2017 all the pollsters and the party itself claimed that they were going to be getting 100 out of 117 seats and they ended up getting 20 and that is when all amadmi was at an all time high in the last 5 years where they have been the major opposition party and the people have seen through what their 20 mlas did who over the last 5 years 11 of them have already joined the congress the rest are already sitting in the current chief minister's car to the extent of they were a b team of congress to such an extent just like they are in delhi is uh the one of the mlas mr khera who is now behind bars for drugs for set up a new party fought an election against me in the parliament elections but despite that he still sat in the vidhan sabha nobody threw him out and today he's joined the congress so this is the extent to the where you know they were just another extension and offshoot of congress party so now when we talk about kejriwal coming here and making these wild promises my first question is which the people of punjab ask all that you are promising in punjab you been in delhi for close to 10 years why have you not given those to the people there are there no women in delhi are there not poor people in delhi when you say you'll give 1000 rupees in every woman's account are there no poor people in delhi why hasn't reached their account where he's already in government or when he talks about giving 300 units of bijli why has he not given over there so all these wild promises he is making over here people wonder why it's not been implemented in delhi secondly he comes here and talks a, a lot about his uh, mohalla clinic his education now mohalla clinics reality was exposed by what happened in covid and the way the bodies were lined up on the roads where our gurdwaras had to open up oxygen uh, langar so that people would get air to breathe and here is one mla of his jarnail singh who came in fought from my constituency against my father in law kejriwal was here yesterday and his tweet dated 29th of april where his mla is begging for a bed and for oxygen and eventually he died so when kejriwal comes here and says ki main suraksha ka kavach dunga aur mohalla clinic lagaunga to this is the reality and people wonder about the reality when his own mla is are dying that is the reality so these lies don't work here and when he talks about you know giving to punjab the man in last 10 years of his rule has not been able to clear the pollution of punjab i mean he's coughing himself and has to run to bangalore for vipassana or come to punjab to breathe the clean air if he's not been able to clean clean the air of delhi what else is he going to clean in punjab you know so all these things of in the high court giving in uh, an appeal that all the thermal plants in punjab should be shut down because delhi has to suffer coming to punjab and saying punjab's water will remain in punjab but going to the supreme court in delhi and putting in an appeal that delhi needs the punjab water as well these double faced things has been seen through and yes they have he has thousands of crores which he and his congress counterpart here are spending on advertising putting up hoardings flooding the social media but if elections could be won just on the basis of money then nobody would bother doing uh, any delivery on the ground so i think there's going to be a major reality check not only is congress going to be wiped out but aam aadmi is going to be in for the rudest shock of their life any chief minister who has time to go running off to every state in which there's an election going on i mean my father in law was chief minister for 10 years if someone told him to come and campaign in delhi even for our gurdwara elections i remember he used to barely get a day off because there's enough work in your own state kejriwal has is one day in uttarakhand one day in goa one day in up 10 days in punjab then going to gujarat what is happening to delhi the chief minister has no time for delhi so punjab is a full time local chief minister we've had enough of these uh, katputli chief ministers puppet chief ministers control from delhi uh hasimrat ji your party as you said that 
uh, farm laws have left a deep scar now your party says that the bjp has been insensitive towards the requirements of farmers what do you uh, promise the farmers if your party comes to power well whatever has been done for farmers in punjab 99% of it is all due to shromani akali dal and especially star prakar singh badal most important thing is that from the time the green revolution came about thanks to punjab and we made our country from food deficit to food surplus today also maximum amount of the grains in the central pool is given by the small state of punjab which is just 2% of india but provides over 60% of the foods that go into the grain mm mm-hmm. in bringing about this green revolution we have uh, given many sacrifices whether it's our water table going down whether it's uh, our soil whether it's our air lots of things are suffered and the farmers have also suffered and all the input costs be it the petrol be it the diesel be it the pesticide the fertilizer the seed is all decided by the central government and the prices have gone up thousand fold since then and the output the msp is also decided by the central government but the msp in proportion to the input cost is no way close to each other as a result every farming household in punjab is under debt lakhs of rupees of debt now mr badal could only do one thing because input is decided by the center the msp is decided by the center what could we as punjab government do is to help out in whichever way we could the most historic thing that mr badal did was make the electricity the water and the electricity for farming totally free for the farmers this is the reason why probably punjab is not another maharashtra where farmers are committing suicide every day because this is the only saving grace besides this by making mandis in every 5 kilometers of uh, in every, between every five villages there's a mandi system this connectivity of the roads we would give full 8 hours of electricity we would procure all their grains all these things were done by the farmers for the farmers have all been done by the akali dal and now we have promised that if we come in uh, in the government if the people give us the mandate once again not only will we bring in an msp for fruits and vegetables but for milk as well we will also from our tax rate reduce uh, by 10 rupees the diesel for the farming people we will also bring around crop insurance like every year we are seeing due to the weather uh due to the different kinds of um uh, diseases which come huge losses for farmers so 50000 per acre will be the insurance of every farmer when the premium will be paid by the government so we will do whatever we can to try and make farming profitable because if the farmer is prosperous then punjab is prosperous because that same farmer who goes and buys from the shops um from the industry so all punjab prospers if the people of punjab that's 80% of punjab that's dependent on farming if the farmer prospers uh, amrinder singh had to take an unceremonious exit from the congress uh, firstly exiting the chief ministerial post but then he joined hands with the bjp and the insas party how do you see this alliance to be a competition in the upcoming elections uh, i think uh, you know like in in punjabi there's a word word called gaddars so people will give a befitting reply to these gaddars and amrinder singh deserved exactly what he got he did not step out <coughs> of his palace for four and a half years even his mlas could not meet him his ministers could not meet him you would be surprised in four and a half years he did not even go to the secretariat for four and a half days so imagine punjab was running by remote controlled by one retired officer who had access to him and how much could that officer care so obviously there was major um, anger not just in the people but even within his own mlas and all and he got exactly what he deserved he should have got it much earlier uh on this uh, bsf jurisdiction row uh, punjab chief minister has moved uh, the court seeking that the uh, center's order be withdrawn now in an uh, interview with the indian express he claimed that the state of punjab was safe and there was no uh, threat uh, made out uh, which could justify the center's action uh, this was in stark contrast with what amrinder singh has been claiming now where does your party stand on these uh, contradictions 
I just like to clarify here that when uh, Channi became Chief Minister and he went to meet the Home Minister of India, the first thing he came out of the door of the Home Minister and said that Punjab has a lot of threats and uh, the border security and the drones and all. And I have asked the Home Minister to tighten the security. So he came out of that meeting after giving his approval for this extension of the BSF and said and did nothing for the one month that he was told that. Uh, when he was already told that it's going to be done, it's only when it came out in public domain and Akali Dal made a hue and cry about it, saying that we will not allow this to happen under any circumstances. And if our government comes in, we will set it right back and uh, send this order back and refuse to let it be implemented. That's when Chandni woke up to it. The fact that the people are resenting that half of Punjab you have already handed over. As soon as you take over, you already handed over to the uh, central government and that only leaves half of Punjab free for uh, Punjab police to run the way they want and you are demeaning your own police and mind you this is the Punjab police when Pathan Court and Dina Nagar took place during our time I can vouch for it that the way Punjab police fought those terrorists who had entered here even before Delhi um, uh, security agencies could reach Punjab our own Punjab police had sorted them out and uh, you know killed them. So that is the Punjab police which fought nine years of terrorism who are more and more than com competent to deal with this. But now if the leadership is corrupt, right, as you know, the Home Minister has been accused in the last cabinet meeting by his own colleague minister of taking crores for transfers of SSPs and the figure is coming to something like 200 crores just in the last few days to transfer SSPs in every district. Now, if the leadership is such that they start taking money for postings and for badlis, then obviously down the line, these police officers have to you know, get back that money from the public itself. And where is the security going to go? So just like their own MLAs during Captain Amrinder Singh's time said that the congressmen and the congress leaders were selling drugs through the police. Now, there's a minister telling the home minister that you're doing posting, taking crores. So this is the state of affairs. So as far as Akali Dal is uh, concerned, we are clear that this was absolutely wrong for the state government to allow this because no central government could have done this without taking the state government into confidence. Channi, in his inexperience, got carried away by whatever story was given by the home ministry and only when Akali Dal made a hue and cry, he woke up to it and now they're trying to do damage control. There has been a furor within the opposition ranks over the suspension of 12 Rajya Sabha MPs over the uh, uh, behavior uh, at the monsoon session. Uh, uh, do you support them? Well, uh, since I'm not a member of the Rajya Sabha and I was in Punjab during the week that this episode happened, uh, I would not comment on it. But what I would comment on the fact is that while these MPs were suspended for their behavior, today there's an MOS of home who is sitting as MOS home despite, despite the fact that the SIT formed by the Supreme Court has found his son guilty of mowing down those farmers, not by default, by accident, but by a planned conspiracy. And the same MOS home has openly from stage a few days before that said that we're going to be teaching these farmers a lesson which his son executes before. Now, despite all this, where has no moral duty, first of all, even when his son's name had cropped up, which the BJP tried everything under the sun to say the son was not there. And today the SIT finds him guilty of a planned conspiracy with the father uh, instigating people to do all this. And blatantly, that guy is still sitting in his chair and BJP is not even allowing a discussion about why he should be removed. So this double standard, I think the country is looking at and the people are looking at. This is how what they did for the farm laws when they refused to listen to 18 parties and they pushed it through. And this high-handed manner is extremely unfortunate because to run the house is the onus of the ruling government. And no house is going to run if the opposition's voice is being stifled or they are being thrown out of the parliament uh, without being heard. It's very unfortunate and sad for the people of the country who are paying crores from uh, their taxpayers' money to see this tamasha that goes on in the parliament. 
थैंक यू सो मच फॉर योर टाइम हरसिमरत जी एंड वी विश यू एंड योर पार्टी ऑल द वेरी बेस्ट फॉर द अपकमिंग इलेक्शन थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू